All right, so energy is power times time. So let's write that out. We have energy. It's just simply equal to power times time. Okay, so units of energy are often given in joules. Power is often joules per second, and time is often given to us in seconds. Um, sometimes you'll also see it written, let's do it above. Um, if you're given power in, let's say, kilowatts, um, kilowatt being a thousand watts and a watt being a joule per second. Um, and if you're also given time in hours, then we would get energy in units of kilowatt hours. Both of those are two common units that we'll be using for energy. But basically the fancy way to write this is energy is a capital W is equal to the time integral uh, from T1 to T2 of power, which is a function of time times dt. And where we actually got this was from the last video where we were talking about power and we had this expression of power being equal to dw dt, which was the rate of energy transfer for power. And just simply reorganizing this, so we have dw is equal to p dt, taking the integral of both sides. And that leaves us with exactly what we have here, just w is equal to that time integral from t1 to t2 of p of t dt. Now, energy is a useful quantity to have because if things are consuming or producing different amounts, like different rates of power, but for different amounts of time, then we can compare them over, you know, different time intervals for like the total energy consumption or the total energy production. For example, let's imagine that we have a toaster and its power consumption is 1200 watts. So that is equal to 1.2 kilowatts. And if we want to toast, let's say, a bagel for three minutes, so it's nice and toasty, um, if we converted that three minutes to hours, we have three minutes times one hour per 60 minutes, so that is 0 0.05 hours. Then the total energy consumed to basically toast that bagel is going to be W is equal to PT. So that's energy is equal to power times time, which is 1.2 kilowatts times 0 0.05 hours. And so we're going to find that the energy consumption for our toast is equal to 0 0.06 kilowatt hours. Now that's a little bit of a nasty unit to have 0 0.06 something, so we can just multiply that by 1000 and write that as 60 watt hours. So that's the total energy consumption of this toaster to toast a bagel for three minutes. Um, now we could compare that to something else. So let's imagine we had an LED light bulb that had, a, let's say, a power consumption of six watts. So we have P bulb is equal to six watts. So then if our energy is equal to power times time, then we can reorganize this to have time is equal to energy over power which is 60 watt hours over six watts, right? We're making the same comparison of the equivalent energy consumption here, 60 watt hours, 60 watt hours. So these watts are going to cancel out and we're going to be left with the time for our bulb can be 10 hours. And what this is telling us is that we can run a six watt LED light bulb for 10 hours and it's going to consume the same amount of energy as toasting our bagel for three minutes. So yeah, just a convenient thing to be able to, to check, you know, two wildly different things and, uh, you know, be able to determine the total energy consumption of them. And, you know, generally heating up stuff with electricity takes a lot of energy. As you can see, you can't run a toaster for very long compared to how long you can run a light bulb for the same total energy consumption. Now, you can do other things with, if you know the energy consumption as well. Like, for example, if you were interested in uh, greenhouse gas emissions, um, you could look up what your greenhouse gas emission factor is for, let's say, your grid electricity where you live. Um, where I live, um, my, my grid electricity emission factor is 0. It's 0. 0.680 um, kilograms of CO2 equivalent per kilowatt hour. And what this basically means, I, I come from a place where most of the electricity is produced by coal and natural gas. And by the time the electricity comes out of the plug in my house on the consumer side, 
every kilowatt hour of energy that's used there will ultimately generate 0.68 kilograms of carbon dioxide emissions equivalents. So that's like all of the different gases that are released in the power generation process, but like normalized to the global warming effect basically of carbon dioxide. Anyways, that's a, that's a whole just field of study in itself. But what you can do is you could multiply this by the energy that we just consumed. So you would multiply this by 0 0.06 kilowatt hours. The kilowatt hours are going to cancel out and we'll be left with 0 0.0408 kilograms of CO2 equivalent. And then you could also maybe just multiply that by a thousand so we get 40.8 grams of CO2 equivalent for either running our light bulb for 10 hours or for toasting our bagel for three minutes. No, that's kind of a random number, 40.8 grams of CO2. Um, seems like a small number, but again, that's a whole field of study that isn't exactly the point of the circuits class, but just something cool that you can realize. Um, and you know, when you think about how many people there are in the world, we have like seven and a half billion right now, something like that. And uh, a lot of those people are making a lot of bagels and turning on a lot of light bulbs, etc. So yeah, so um, that's some cool place that you can go once you start understanding circuits and electricity and energy and power. Um, it's a whole cool field of study that you might be interested in. So anyways, I digress there. Um, let's get back into circuits and we'll move on to the next video and we're going to talk about what is resistance.